we have so many 650s in our <laughs> applicant pool and I, I i kind of talking to her i understood that i'm mm-hmm. uh, i was mostly out of touch with that so i had to reconnect and just solve solving problems on the gmail club it did not help me as much and the verbal portion was completely like it it was a <laughs> uncharted field it was like into the unknown okay and i was like going wrong in pretty much uh, RC and uh, the CR and same for goes for CR <laughs> just trying to find the correct assumption mm-hmm. um it's something that you know my gut feeling would say this is the correct answer uh um, I'm missing a, a methodology or you know structured structured mm-hmm. approach of solving this question there is a, yeah. there is a, there is a way to solve this so hi arnab Thank you so much for doing this today and a big congratulations on your 750 thank you, thank you. and your admits to both Kellogg's and Booth. What a wonderful journey. So how does it feel? It feels great, yeah. I mean, it's something I've always dreamt of, but uh, I finally got to achieve it now, thanks to you, EGMAT. So thank you. It's a, it's brilliant. It, it's been a wonderful journey yeah. and that is what we are here to talk about, right? Uh, so, Arnab, tell me, um, you had appeared for GMAT earlier before the 750 attempt, and you got a 650 on that with a Q45 and a V20, V33, right? So, what was your, uh, you know, thinking of post that, and what made you switch gears and uh, change the strategy towards preparation? Yeah, so, I mean, I was... like looking at the scores of the target scores that I'm interested in uh, yeah i was sure that i'm not really making a mark and i need to, to do like a lot better mm-hmm. i actually spoke with a admission admin from kellogg and she was like uh, we have so many 650s in our <laughs> applicant pool and I, i i kind of talking to her i understood that i'm i needed a better score mm-hmm. um so yeah i started i was looking for programs and i looked at a bunch of youtube videos or reviews on gmat club and we thought okay gmat is a good platform and let's try it out mhm okay and that's how we got enrolled brilliant so what were your biggest hurdles to this great gmat score post that for well, yeah so i am from a quantum background but i am kind of like out of touch with most mm-hmm. of the eight or eight grade and grade math mhm um so that the permutations combination so uh, i think a little bit of 11th and 12th grade math also mm-hmm. um, i was mostly out of touch with that so i had to reconnect and just solve solving problems on gmat club it did not help me as much it helped me but not as much as i would expect mm-hmm. and the verbal portion was completely like it, it was a <laughs> uncharted field it was like into the unknown okay and i was like going wrong in pretty much uh, rc and uh, the cr sentence mm-hmm. completion i was i was able to do correct sentence completions um, up to the 650s level but beyond okay. that um, i was getting mostly incorrect answers so mm-hmm. my range was around 650 and that's what i got in the okay. score so it, in order to improve i had to do something else okay so essentially what you needed was a uh, for verbal a holistic kind of a approach that would improve your ability and for quant to be able to revise and rehash things that you already knew right um so yeah, yes like let's structure yes structure and with uh, like a comprehensive material that covers mm-hmm. almost everything so i i don't have a lack of knowledge when i'm like solving questions or i'm taking the actual test got it got it uh, so arnab let's talk about the verbal journey from a 33 to a 42 it's a humongous nine point journey right so um you started with master comprehension and i know that you've uh, really benefited from that so can you tell us what was the value of master comprehension in this journey yeah so like as so i'm an engineer and i mostly read technical documents mm-hmm. i don't read uh, maybe documents from arts or humanities or you know cooking or uh, making cheese and all of that mm-hmm. um also biological sciences a lot of technical uh, scientific information mm-hmm. so reading the sentences and making sense of them was pretty hard mm-hmm. uh, no doubt and then on top of that you have a time constraint and a big passage and so question solving mm-hmm. and the questions are like really deep and you need to like exactly know what 
what the passage is saying so that um and that you can answer the questions and the difficulty mm -hmm. keeps on going increasing and questions become more tough so you need to really know your passage mm -hmm. I, at the first attempt so that was something that i was not able to do and same for goes for cr <laughs> just trying to find the correct assumption mm -hmm. um it's something that you know my gut feeling would say this is the correct answer it, it was not and uh, i was feeling that i i i can uh, um, i'm missing a, a methodology or you know structured structured mm -hmm. approach of solving this question there is no, a, no. there is a, there is a way to solve this question but i don't know it yeah and i wasn't able to find it anywhere so yeah yeah so essentially what 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 you uh, want to say is the first thing the first most important thing is to read the right way so that you comprehend then comes yeah the process of solving the questions mm -hmm. right okay uh, so yeah, i mean if you, if i think that is that makes or breaks your exam i think yes it's it's so vital <laughs> Yes. Like you have a clock ticking, and you cannot afford to waste any any minute, and you have to get it right maybe the first or like maybe the second time, but not yes. not after that. Yes, you don't have the luxury to read the yeah. paragraph yeah. or the passage again and again, right? Uh, so perfect. So Arnab now coming to CR, which was the the Achilles heel sort of a thing in verbal wherein you were starting, you are in your 30th percentile, 36th percentile kind of an ability. So how did you go from there to that B42 level in CR? Yeah, so um, again, my intuition and, and that that doesn't work out. That, that's just, that has to go. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for a structure and uh, I think that the, the course in EGM, it had that structure. Uh, mm -hmm. The, uh, when, like, I wasn't getting a lot of sense from that structure, but I just kept going, kept slogging through the uh, the modules, and mm -hmm. so by 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 the end of it, when I'm almost into the cementing phase, um, I was I was uh, still not trusting the process, but I'm kind of making a, like maybe fifty percentile. I was getting correct, and mm -hmm. as I kept going, the 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 structure of that. Um, the structure it gets you know embedded in you and mm -hmm. then 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 you know the, i mean it's more practice and then then you kind of get very familiar with it you mm -hmm. cut down your time and it, things just work out yeah so yeah it has been, it has been it just I, to, I would say just trust the process and it will work out um even though it seems very strange at first but uh, it eventually worked out for me so I perfectly understand what you say, and I have this interesting uh, screen to share now, which shows that despite the misgivings that you had, because any new process that you're trying to adopt doesn't come naturally to you, and you will have those misgivings. But despite that, how diligently you went through each of the files and did not leave any single stone unturned in this process to really master and make this process intuitive. So what we are seeing here is your grades, which are milestone-based grades, which assess the amount of time you have spent on the files, the scores you have had, the diligence with which you have completed this. So all this is seen through this. And you can see that in CR, most of your grades are A or B, which is really, really brilliant. And it's, it's like when we compare your journey with other students who have had a similar journey or already in the 90th percentile. That is how well you did the course. And that that is why I would say by the time you read cementing, the process had become intuitive to you. And you did see the results from that 50% accuracy to you went to a 70, 80% accuracy for medium questions and around a 65, 70% for hard, right? Uh, so great job on that, right? Thank you. Um, I would like to yeah, mention something here that yeah this process it kind of gets um, into your like subconscious level and so when i'm trying to like actively think about it and actively implement the process then uh, i'm getting wrong answers because i'm trying to like second guess and but mm -hmm. if i'm like letting letting go of the of the thoughts and just just looking at the question looking at the answers then i'm you know getting those correct um, because um, i feel that the process you know it kind kind of gets into subconscious level and it works like that 
when yes. i'm trying to like really think about it and when i'm conscious about it i'm getting wrong answers so i yes. would i would suggest just to be relaxed and just yes. just trust the process yes beautifully said i think uh, trust the process use it repeatedly so that it becomes intuitive second nature right? yeah yes and also the, the 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 modules that you said um the modules actually have very good questions in them mm-hmm. they um i think they have great questions actually they the first uh, the concept is introduced and immediately after i think we have three or four uh practice questions and that those really help so i think going through the module will actually help it, it won't hurt or it won't like you know take away a lot of your time it mm-hmm. will actually help that's that's um, because they are meant there to give you that learning to make you understand the process and you know uh, really take it to that level wherein it becomes second nature right and the fact that tree thinking became such a second nature is not only evidenced in the great improvement in your accuracy but also the drop in the time like if i look at your time graph you used to take around 2 and 1/2 3 minutes to solve cr from there your timing came down to almost 1 minute 45 seconds so can you tell us how did you go about really how did the approach really help you reduce your time i mean your yeah, time is of essence time is like valuable real estate in gg <laughs> um so yeah before i was taking a lot of time just to read the question and mm-hmm. then going through each each uh, answer one by one and trying to eliminate but uh, i think after the process or during the process you kind of start looking at target answers and start pre-thinking like in your head mm-hmm. um and you you start to look for stuff in in those answers and i think you can eliminate i think 50 or 60 75% of the answer choices just mm-hmm. by you know tr- do, by that pr- process of elimination mm-hmm. so you you are down to like two two choices and then you have to really look carefully look good at them and then you can make so that that process of elimination and the overall process of rethinking i think that cuts down your time mm-hmm. uh, significantly yeah. and once you like uh, once you're in that once you kind of know the process you start with medium questions uh, as as you solve then you get more confident and just move on to the hard ones yeah so the, the whole process is uh, just practice more and it will help you out oh, brilliant uh, so arnab you also done cementing you know post after doing the course you did cementing and your cementing stats are really really brilliant to ju- just just to give you uh, an insight to our viewers these are your cementing stats you know uh, 65% uh, 65% accuracy for sccr and 75% accuracy for rc these are for hard questions and this literally translates to a v42 right so the scholarium stats do indicate that you are prepped for success in verbal to get to that b42 so tell us what was the uh, uh, what role did cementing play in this entire verbal improvement journey so i just first you know you get medium questions thrown at you and you solve them and get more confident and then you get those hard questions uh, i think i I, w- I wasn't able to saw uh, to clear uh, the cr and these sentence completion and rc cementing at once so i was like going through it going through more consuming more questions but but the overall like, um, the overall exercise was, will help you you know try uh, focus on all areas of expertise what, mm-hmm. all these stuff that you need to know before mm-hmm. you go out there and solve um, solve uh, question banks you know so so that the cementing it, it it hits home all the areas of expertise that we need to know yes so it's it's pretty all rounded in that uh, sense and um before getting you out of the door to solve uh, the uh, question bank it gives you an all rounded appro- approach so so you're like it, it makes you equipped for yes. for for you know any challenge yes that, i think that is I because that's because the cementing questions have been specifically curated to you know work on each of the skills that you're building they are representative of all the topics and as you rightly said give you that all rounded practice that is required to really build your ability right uh, you've also solved about 1000 plus questions on the platform 
right? And I know that you have used data to really help drive that improvement. As you as you just said, there were a little ups and downs in even during cementing. So how did you leverage the data and the data analytics to really, because what we saw in front of us in the graph was by the time you're done, your accuracies were fantabulous, right? So how did you take it up to that level? Yeah, so the, the whole exam is about solving questions. Right? There's no other way mm -hmm. to, to do well on the GMAT. So, so you just have to solve more questions. Um, so to, to go to that level of expertise, to, to a certain level of expertise where uh, my target score is, um, I, I have to solve more questions. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the app, um, I think the, is the mock dashboard or the scholar in provides a, yeah, it provides a very good analytic of, uh, so I, I just keep taking questions. When I go back to the dashboard, I can look at what, what questions I took which areas they were from and what were the testing and and how mm -hmm. well I did, what's my percentage accuracy, like all sorts of metrics that I need to know to target a specific area and mm -hmm. of weakness. And, you know, from there I can, I can target a specific area that, okay, I know I'm, I'm getting a little bit lower than maybe 30 or 40% or lower than 50%. And I can hit mm -hmm. those areas and I can get better on them. So in that mm -hmm. way, it tells you what your weaknesses are and what you need to improve, what you're already good at. So just um, keep keep working on it. <laughs> so it's it's a great great platform, I would say. Yeah. The analytics. Um, and I think it's it's better than even the GMAT Club platform. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, it is meant to give our students the insight into what are the areas to focus on, be it accuracy, be it time, and how can you really get to that level of hyper-specific improvement because once you're on scholarium that is what you're playing with right yeah so, you want yeah mm -hmm. go ahead no no i was just saying it, it's brilliant that you were able to leverage those analytical tools and really get to that level yeah so i, I would like to add something about time that mm -hmm. uh, we should not like worry about time too much during mm -hmm. our initial yeah Mm -hmm. We just just give, take take all the time that it takes to to you know totally understand the question arrive at the uh, correct answer and try try to follow the methods and mm -hmm. inculcate that learning. Once we get uh, start solving more questions and we start getting good at it, the time will come down. Yeah. Uh, once you have you know you have tested a process thousand times, the time is bound to come down. So I I would not worry too much about time mm -hmm. in the initial. Stage is more mostly about uh, from RC or CR or you know the, the verbal portion. Just just take your time and um, just try to get the question right or try to understand what what is being asked. Uh, yes. I, I wouldn't worry too much of, about time in the, during the first phase. I think you have a brilliant point there because the first focus has to be built has to build the ability. Only once you build that ability is when you work on on reducing yeah, the time yeah. right so if you're trying to do both of them together then you aren't doing a great job at either of them um, and i think that's that's brilliant so now coming to quant you said you wanted a very different strategy in quant from verbal verbal you wanted a all-rounded improvement in your score but quant you were at a 45 but it was more about you uh, having to revise, recall stuff that you knew, but you did not remember anymore, right? And how did you go about approaching it and how did PACE really help you, uh, you know, yeah. get so, so, to yeah, your... Pace, yeah, PACE is like a, it's, it's a really handy tool. It uh, just You just take a test and it tells you what you need to learn and what what you what things you are already good at and you don't mm -hmm. need to. Uh, you can skip those topics essentially. Um, so yeah, in, in that, it's a great tool. I, I am from a quant background, so pretty versed in like all, all, everything that is asked in the GMAT. So, but I do have forgotten a lot of the high school maths. Mm -hmm. So there are spe specific areas that I need to hit on and um, more like re refresh and like maybe they're, they're uh, quite interesting. <laughs> there were a few stuff I needed to learn from scratch. Um, and yeah, the, the, those those were my weak spots, and Pace accurately diagnosed those. Mm -hmm. And I just went to those areas and uh, on the modules, and I finished those modules. And yeah, I was able to like you know 
uh, refresh my skills and yeah, like get get the whole background. Before this, uh, before eGMAT, I was uh, doing a lot of GMAT club questions and mm -hmm. uh, original guide questions, and that didn't have like a set syllabus or um, a set uh, you know set of questions that uh, hits on all the on all these uh, topics that are you know uh, under in the exam. So I was missing out on a lot, and mm -hmm. I paid the price for it in my first GMAT. I, I couldn't solve like a couple mm -hmm. of really basic questions that I mm -hmm. should have. Mm -hmm. So I kept that in mind and that was very thorough uh, with the pace and just whatever it recommended me to go and take. I made sure I completed those modules and most of the other stuff I skipped. So I saved a bunch of, a lot, a lot of time actually. Yeah. But it also gives me that all-rounded approach. So yes. yeah, I, I, that's, a, that's a good good plus of um, of the mm -hmm. PACE system. Yeah, I think you've saved over 30 hours using the PACE uh, in quant prep just, right? So, great. So, Arna, it's one thing to really build your ability, look at the data and know that you are at a stage wherein you can go take the test and get to your target score. There's another thing, thing to manage your mindset on the day of the test because that is what Clint is the deal on the test day. So tell us, how did you manage your nerves on the test day and how yeah. did you handle that? So it's important to know where you are taking the test. How are you going to get there, the logistics of it? Uh, what are you going to eat? What are you going to do on that day? Mm -hmm. When are you going to get up? Uh, mm -hmm. What's your uh, day going to look like? And just, just be relaxed and, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I'm not, oh, sorry. <laughs> just be relaxed and... Uh, like uh, just you know maybe a couple days or a day before that just switch off and mm -hmm, don't mm -hmm. try it, uh, really to think of the exam or try yeah. to read or there's i don't think it will improve <laughs> the score too much but it, yeah, it, it might end up hurting us you know mm -hmm. so just just go um just be relaxed wear comfortable clothes uh wear eat something that is good light on your stomach Mm -hmm. and take a lot of food and take a lot of um, like not not like heavy food like protein bars and stuff that will it's like a snack but it'll keep you full and mm -hmm. a lot of fluids uh, I was taking uh, an energy drink you know, I just took it because it keeps me awake it doesn't let me fall asleep mm -hmm. um, and so just chalking out the whole situation like what is going to be on the test day I think that that will that will really help. Got it. Got it. So, so I yeah. think, yes. The test yeah. center environment is inherently stressful. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a lot of people. Uh, so just, just being there on time, having plenty of time in hand. Uh, just the usual stuff, you know, if you do all that right, it's, you don't need to worry too much on test day. Yeah. Yes, because you need to be test ready. That is what, as I said, clinches the deal on the DD. You know, that's yeah. what puts that... Uh, that's the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle that brings it all together, the corny piece, right? So brilliant, Varna. Thank you so much for this. So if I have to ask you, are there any two key takeaways that you want to share with the other GMAT aspirants out there so that they can also learn from your journey and take a page to make their journey you know, more successful? So yeah, the first thing would be the obvious thing that uh, the verbal is much more Mm -hmm. um, weighted than the quant in the GMAT so I think we should just uh, take take that verbal thing more seriously the verbal side and um, the, so my first GMAT I, I was focusing a lot more on the quant trying to mm -hmm. achieve that perfection and not focusing adequately on the verbal so that backfired and my score was kind in the middle so so yeah so I would, that would be the first point and the second point would be to get a structured approach, mm -hmm. um, because there, there, I, I can only you know, take six months and try to slog it out on the GMAT Club website, and uh, get get. But it would, it's not going to hit all those areas that I wanted to hit, mm -hmm. and uh, get 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 the uh, competencies and the expertise in all the areas that I need. I mm -hmm. think a more structured approach would be to get into. Uh, get with get with an institution and um take take advantage of their their, their courses and prepare mm -hmm. for that 
I think EG Mart is an excellent platform for that. I'm not advertising, but it has helped me out. Um, but I think a structure is important, and structure will bring discipline. And you are you are essentially paying a lot of money for it. So mm-hmm. in a way, you will be you know in your mind that okay, if I'm not doing it, I'm waste kind of wasting my money. So if you try to get your money's worth, if you try to get value for money, then you are going to work on it. So yes. I think that will also help. Yes, I think what you said is so right. Structure, not, structure yes. is very important. Yes, otherwise you might be working on it for a long time, but not see the results that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah. Right. So brilliant, and thank you. I'm so happy. I know you're going to get started with your orientation tomorrow. So all the very yeah. best for it, Good and thank, thank you again, thank you. and congratulations. So I, I would just wanted to personally thank you, Rashmi. Um, so I think you helped me out with a couple of um. really great suggestions on the rc that that really helped me out mm-hmm. um on 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 just you know reducing the time required and and um you know improving the accuracy on the rc so i really wanted to personally thank you for that um yeah you've been a great mentor so yeah thank you pleasure has been mine so it's it's really wonderful to see you know your students succeed and get to this brilliant score thank you again and